compound masks allow you to combine multiple masks together, making them ideal for more advanced masking situations. Here is a straightforward example. I may want to have a workflow for quickly modifying all three of these monolith structures in the composition. I'll go to the layer menu and choose New Compound Mask Layer. By default, this will place a compound mask into the Selective Color Adjustment Layer. I don't want this, so I'll just drag this compound mask out to the top of the layer stack. I can now add my individual masks to this. So for these masks, a quick solution would be to expand the island groups and command click on Mac, control click on Windows on the monolith layer. This will load it to an active selection. Although I command or control clicked on the monolith layer, the compound mask is actually still selected. So I can now create a mask layer from the current selection. I'll deselect using Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows, and I can expand the compound mask to see my first monolith mask. Now I'll select the compound mask and repeat the process for the next island. and a third time for the final island. The two masks sitting above the first mask have this icon next to their thumbnails. These icons allow us to change the operators for the masks. In this example, I will want to keep them all set to add. Now I can use this compound mask to mask anything I want. For example, I'll create a new group and I'll click drag the compound mask and offer it to the group thumbnail. Then release the mouse button. It will then act as a mask for the group. The rest of the composition is still not being displayed. I need to put some content into the group. I'll add a brightness contrast adjustment. Then click drag and offer it to the group text, not the thumbnail and this will child layer or clip the adjustment into the group. Now, if I move these sliders on the adjustment dialog, the effect will be limited to the combination of those three masks I created. The benefit over simply combining three selections together in one mask is that I can now non-destructively remove a mask from the overall compound mask. For example, I'll expand the compound mask and set the top mask's operator to subtract. Notice the brightness contrast adjustment is no longer rendering on the monolith structure to the right. Whereas, if I set the operator back to add, it will once again be affected by the adjustment. Another use for compound masks is to combine masks based on channel information and intensity calculations. I'll show you on this example. Once again, I'll create a compound mask layer and I'll drag it out of the diffuse glow layer so it resides at the top of the layer stack. Now I'll move over to the channels panel, right click the composite red channel and choose load to pixel selection. I now have a selection of the red channel information. I'll move back to the layers panel and create a mask layer from this selection. Then deselect. Now I'll select the compound mask once again, and I'll create a weighted intensity selection, also known as a luminosity selection, from the main background image down here. To achieve this, I can hold Option and Command on Mac, Control and Alt on Windows, then left click on the layer thumbnail. Because the compound mask is still selected, I can just add a mask layer, then deselect. I can double click into these masks and rename them to stay organized. So I'll call this one red and this one intensity. Now I might add a curves adjustment using command M on Mac, control M on Windows and click drag the compound mask into the curves adjustment thumbnail. To mask it, I'll create quite an aggressive downward curve to darken tones in the image, but this effect is currently being masked to an additive combination 
of the red channel information and weighted intensity information. I can expand the curves adjustment layer, then subsequently the compound mask layer, to gain access to the operators. I could change the intensity mask operator to intersect or ZOR, which stands for exclusive OR, to produce a balanced or weighted combination of the two masks rather than simply adding them together. I'll choose intersect. Then I can preview the effect the compound mask is having by hiding it temporarily. So now I could manipulate the curves adjustment further and I'll quickly hide the curves adjustment itself so we can see the before and the after. So combining the red channel information and weighted intensity has allowed me to deepen the color tones and create more contrast between the bike and the background cloud detail. Let's take advantage of the non-destructive nature of this functionality by adding another mask to the mix. I'll select the intensity mask, then use Command J on Mac or Control J on Windows to duplicate it. I'll now invert the mask information. I can do this by going to Layer, Invert, or I can use the shortcut. So that's Command I on Mac, Control I on Windows. I'll name this mask Intensity Inverted to keep track of it. Now I'll change its operator to exclusive or, which will determine mask information based on whether or not the mask pixel values are the same as those of the two combined masks below it. This creates a dramatic, high contrast look. However, I am free to experiment non-destructively with this. For example, if I change the operator to subtract, this completely alters the look. And if I hide the curves adjustment, we'll see this has a very subtle effect where just a tiny amount of the highlight detail is being changed. I'll switch the operator back to Zor for now. And don't forget you can change the overall strength of the compound mask by altering its opacity. Bringing it down to 50%, for example, allows me to achieve a more subtle contrast enhancement. In fact, I might decide this is too subtle and choose an opacity of around 85%. Finally, I'll show you a quick example where you might combine live masks with a compound mask. On this astrophotography composition, I'll add a compound mask and drag it out to the top of the layer stack. I'll then add a hue range mask and I'll rotate the controls until most of the nebula detail is highlighted. I'll also increase the blur radius for a softer transition between the transparent and opaque areas. Now I'll select the compound mask and I'll also add a luminosity range mask. I'll drag the left hand node down, then I'll close the dialog, expand the compound mask and set the luminosity range masks operator to intersect. Finally, I'll add a brightness contrast adjustment drag the compound mask into its thumbnail to mask it and increase both brightness and contrast sliders. Using the intersect operator with these two live masks helps to severely restrict the effect of the adjustment. If I hide and then show the compound mask, you can appreciate this. I am able to just enhance the key nebula detail without affecting the background. So being able to combine these masks gives us that extra level of flexibility and control. And there we go, a look at how compound masks work in Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.